please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. A very good evening and welcome back. Walmart now is shelling out $16 billion for a 77% stake in Flipkart. Now, how will this deal impact Flipkart's fashion subsidiaries? That's Mintra and Jabong. Kritika Saxena caught up with the man running both those companies. That's the CEO, Anant Narayan. Here's an excerpt of that conversation. Ananta, uh, thank you so much for joining in on the show. Uh, to begin with, how will you use Walmart's entry in terms of synergies for both Flipkart and Mintra? Sure. So, um, look, firstly, I think it's a historic deal for the Flipkart group. Um, I think Walmart are long-term investors. Uh, I think this is a major strategic investment for them. Uh, so on the Mintra and Jabang side, they're very excited because I think it brings long-term capital. Uh, it will hopefully help us accelerate our journey uh, in terms of becoming the fashion destination in India. Uh, as you know, we also are quite uh, into omni-channel and we have our own yeah. stores. Yeah. So we also hope to benefit in terms of capabilities uh, and learnings from the Walmart um, uh, system. Hmm. Um, so I think that will certainly be a benefit. But uh, more than anything else, I think it's just long-term capital and an ability yeah. to think bigger and bolder for us. You know, Anand, you spoke about, about. about capital. Uh, uh, $2 billion is a fresh uh, issue and equity infusion that will be coming in. How much of that can we expect coming into Mintra and Jabon specifically or into the entire fashion segment portfolio? So, um, you know, actually, uh, don't really know. I mm -hmm. think the way we do capital allocation is based on our overall business plan. Okay. At the current point, you know, we are well capitalized. We have an annual operating plan for 2019. As I've spoken to you guys before, we're aiming at yeah. about, you know, we're aiming at large numbers this time. So I don't think there's any change. I don't think there's any uh, immediate um, capital allocation mm. that's actually planned. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Anand, the focus for Mintra has been to grow private labels. What kind of yep. opportunity does this uh, uh, mean with Walmart coming on board? Walmart is very excited about the fashion segment per se. So what kind of opportunity does this throw up? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, there are many opportunities, both in the short and in the mid term. Okay. Uh, I think one is we can certainly benefit from learning from Walmart around our global sourcing and how do we actually get real benefits of scale. Mm -hmm. uh, that may happen in a bit. Um, uh, the second, I think, is, you know, some of our private labels perhaps could go global, okay. uh, especially the Bollywood brands where I yeah. think there is Indian diaspora and now there's a You know, that was going to be my next question, Anand. You know, you have brands like HRX, All About You, Dressberry, yep. Roadster. Which of yep. these brands are going to get that global platform? And are you saying, so, you know, most of the private labels are going to get that global platform with Walmart on board? So, uh, you know, uh, too early to comment, but I'm hoping that a couple of brands, especially the Bollywood ones, there will be real, um, mm. uh, there'll be a real opportunity, especially mm. when there's large Indian diaspora, right, mm. uh, outside globally. So, um, I think early days, so I think mm. uh, you don't know yet, but I'm certainly excited about the possibility and it's some of the things that we will be discussing. Okay, that is very critical. But Anant, you know, Walmart also has several private labels. So, has there been any kind of discussion to bring Walmart's private labels like George, for instance, into the Indian market? You know, would that be a part of the synergies? You know, uh, actually, by the way, we're thinking less in terms of synergy and more in terms of things that we can learn from each other and I okay. think it's going to be very much of a pull model hmm. so not yet but uh, you, know, you never say never <laughs> fair enough uh, in terms of revenue growth then uh, Anant what kind of incremental revenue do you expect to flow into most of these private uh, labels uh, you know purely from an outlook perspective with Walmart on board yeah so too early to tell Kritika right hmm. I think in the next several months as we firm our plans we will know a bit more around how we want to think about the next year I think in the current year, we're just going to continue on our plan as is. Okay. Uh, and I think we have ambitious plans, which I've spoken about earlier. So I yeah. think that continues to be what we're going after. Anand, speaking about uh, ambitious plans, you had said earlier uh, to us, in fact, that you were expecting to break even in 6 to 12 months. So is that plan uh, intact? Can that be sooner? And what's the road to profitability looking like for you? So, you know, we're continuing to push to make sure that all the right investments are there for growth okay. while the operating business continues to improve in profitability. I think that journey we're continuing. Mm -hmm. um, but we are starting new categories. As I've told you, personal care is something that I think we're now very excited by. Yeah. Omnichannel is, is another area where we're making investments. Uh, we also opened, as you know, uh, a small center in Palo Alto for data science. Mm -hmm. So we're also starting to make a bunch of investments for the long term while continuing to improve the operating problem. 
Right, so exciting times ahead as far as Flipkart is concerned. Let's move ahead now. The rise in crude oil prices has the government concerned. What's worse, the decision by the United States to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal is not only pushing the prices higher, but also complicating matters for India's oil imports. Sapna Das is here with more. Sapna, uh, how worried is the government and what is the government's reading of this situation? Well, Ashmin, two aspects, um, you know, on the face of it, uh, the, the statements that have come out from, at least from the finance ministry side, you know, does not indicate a major worry. But um, if you speak to officials across the board and try to get a sense, um, you know, this, uh, this is a huge worry. This is already a huge worry. In fact, our Indian food basket right now, around, uh, it's around $70. It's up from $56 average of last financial year. So that's a pretty steep rise. So that's one. So basically, the indications that are coming out, we have already seen what has happened in terms of the rupee. So there is the current account deficit. There is uh, there are the bond yields, the, the resultant impact of rupee and CAD on bond yields, and of course the fiscal deficit question. Because the indications, the murmurs basically right now are that probably the government will have to do an excise cut sooner than later, which of course will have its own fiscal implications. But overall, the overall cost to the economy is expected to basically go up substantially because we really don't seem to have a strategy in place. Uh, moreover, if you uh, you know keep in mind what the DA secretary had just told us uh, told us a couple of uh, weeks ago, basically you know that they will like to take a policy response probably with crude sustained between seventy five to eighty dollars a barrel. Uh, you know a lot of people are commenting on this. They have, they are the, their view is that probably the government should not wait for that. You know some kinds of policy response or vision strategy should be in place. So that's one. And the other aspect, as you rightly said, this Iran thing is also complicating the whole issue. What we are given to understand is that probably we'll have to, you know, look for supplies from the other uh, partners from whom we keep purchasing oil. So there, the cost is going to be prohibitive. This is what we understand as of now. Wait and watch situation, but uh, probably a bit of a stormy situation in terms of you know, the storm being there uh, somewhere far away on the coast. Uh, you know, not really hitting the India show so much, but the next couple of weeks are going to be very critical. Indeed, uh, Sapna, thanks a lot for that analysis. So Sapna clearly pointing out that the Indian basket currently is pegged at $70 per barrel as opposed to 66 just last year. So some concerns there for the government. Time now for a very small break, but up ahead, setback for Google India. Bangalore's ITAT confirms royalty taxation for Google's AdWords program. Details when we return. Well, in what may be seen as a setback for Google India, the Bengaluru Bench of Income Tax Appellate Tribunal has confirmed royalty taxation for Google's AdWords program. We have Arun Giri joining us now to decode this order. Uh, Arun, I'm sure it must have been a reasoned order, but what was the appellate tribunal's reasoning uh, and why it was not impressed with Google's arguments? The reasoning, uh, you know, spans over 330 pages. Uh, and, and definitely I've not had the time to go through all the 330 pages. It's a very, very technical you know, complex uh, case, but but to try to uh, make it simple for our viewers, essentially it's about taxability of the very popular Google AdWords program, where advertisers, companies bid, uh, to, you know, to have their search results displayed uh, at a, a favorable slot on page one or at a favorable higher slot, uh, you know, when, when users search for certain specific, uh, you know, queries. So that is essentially the Google AdWords program. Uh, the contracts that the advertisers have is in most cases with Google India when they pay in the Indian currency. And Google India receives its advertisement fees, retains 15% with them, and pays 85% of the advertisement fees to Google Ireland. And uh, the department contended that the payment made by Google India, the 85%, to Google Ireland is nothing but royalty and hence should be taxed. Whereas Google's uh, contention was no, it is merely a facilitator. This is payment of business profits and, and therefore, it is not in the nature of royalty being a mere facilitator, uh, whereas uh, the, the ITAT has held that, no, it's not, it's not mere facilitator, that technology, that essentially the Google AdWords uses certain complex technologies, which is enabled by Google Island. And therefore, the payment made by Google India to Google Island encompasses a technology element and therefore it is taxable as royalty it is important to remember that this these that this, this judgment will affect cases up to 2013 or 14 for google uh, but but thereafter india has legislated a couple of years ago a flat 6% tax known as equalization levy 
on internet uh, uh, advertisement. So therefore, it will not uh, have an impact going forward, but it will have an impact uh, uh, until the year probably 2013. But definitely, the IT income tax department would consider this a big win. It is the second order passed by the income tax appellate tribunal against Google. Against the first order, uh, the Google had gone to the Karnataka High Court. Karnataka High Court had directed the ITAT that for the future years, uh, pass an order uninfluenced by the first order. And therefore, you had almost like a re-earing uh, which spanned more than a week. Uh, and ITAT has come out with a very long 331 pages order, essentially saying that the payment made by Google India to Google Island right, is nothing but royalty. Fair enough, Arun. Thanks a lot for decoding that ITAT order for us. Let's move ahead now. Social networking major Facebook has responded to the second notice sent by the IT ministry. Remember, the notice sought more details on the data breach scandal where Cambridge Analytica accessed data of over 87 million Facebook users without authorization. Now, according to sources, Facebook in its response has listed the steps it has taken to stop the potential misuse. Rituparna Bhuya now is joining us with more details. Rituparna, take us through the highlights of Facebook's response and what exactly they have to say in response to the concerns expressed by the government. In its reply to the second set of queries by Ministry of IT, Facebook has done two things. Firstly, it has uh, specified, specified uh, measures that it is taking to that that is it is taking to stop misuse, and, and on that count, it has told the Ministry of IT that it's going to double the uh, uh, man that, that the manpower it has uh, from 10,000 to 20,000. Uh, that will be dealing specifically with uh, misuse. Uh, also, it has told the uh, uh, Ministry of IT uh, that. Uh, only authorized entities and advertisers uh, will be allowed to post uh, political ads and uh, it will also put in public domain uh, the list of advertisers which it had rejected. Um, it, is, it also told the uh, Minister of IT that uh, uh, while it is blocking uh, a, 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 a lot of uh, fake profiles, it is at the same time developing systems uh, and software that will be basically used uh, to, to stop uh, uh, automated programs from trying to create fake accounts. Uh, now the second part of the reply, according to sources, is related to information on who will be the points person in India from Facebook, who will be dealing with the uh, Ministry of IT on any queries related to data breach. However, it has told uh, the Ministry of IT that it doesn't know uh, how its uh, th uh, third-party app uh, processes uh, sensitive personal data. It has also told the Ministry of IT that it, that it doesn't know what kind of data was shared between Cambridge Analytica and GSR. With that, it's back to you. Right, Ritu, thanks a lot for that. So Facebook clearly listing out its action plan for India. Let's move ahead now. After facing rigorous questioning by the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate, Karthi Chidambaram is now facing fresh trouble, this time at the hands of the Income Tax Department. We learn from sources that the Income Tax Department has filed prosecution cases against Karthi Chidambaram, his mother and his wife for not disclosing their overseas assets. The case has been filed under Section 30 of the Black Money Act and seeks jail term for all the accused. Well, time now for a very short break, but up next, uh, telecom stocks Bharti Airtel and Idea Cellular were hammered in trade. Why? We tell you on the other side. Well, the five-member GST committee led by Bihar Deputy Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi met today in order to discuss the viability of incentivizing digital payments. Remember, last week the GST Council during its meeting had discussed giving a 2% cash back up to 100 rupees to consumers making digital payments. But the group of ministers, however, could not take a decision. We spoke to members of the committee. They told us that a number of issues had cropped up. They said that the committee will have to assess the impact of incentives and study the model globally before arriving at a decision. Let's listen in. Today, the digital transactions to incentivize the group of ministers to incentivize the group of ministers. There will be another one more to do. There are some issues that और उन सारे इश्यूज पर विचार हम लोग करेंगे कि इस डिजिटल इंसेंटिव देने से आ, क्या लाभ होगा क्या नुकसान होगा इन सारे पहलुओं पर और कई तरह के मुद्दे आए हैं और इसलिए उन सारी चीजों पर विचार करने के लिए फिर एक और बैठक होगी इन द मीन टाइम द ऑफिशियल्स दे विल कलेक्टिंग सम डेटास सो वॉट विल द लॉसेज वॉट विल द गेन एंड मैनी अदर इशूज विच हैव बीन रेज बाई द मिनिस्टर्स ऑल्सो एंड Even many of the states, they have sent their 
comments on this particular topic. We will have to go threadbare mm. on each of the viewpoints, whether they are differing from each other, whether they are agreeing from each other. And the officials will go into the data mining and data analysis based on the inputs received at today's meeting. And then in the next meeting, we'll again go threadbare with little more information, maybe some international studies as well to look at best practices elsewhere. And then we will collectively come together. So I do not want to say anything individually. Our individual positions are known to the media. I think one thing uh, uh, that the subcommittee was in agreement was that uh, the shadow economy needs to be decreased. And uh, India must become a cashless society. And for that, uh, one way would be to study the best practices of many countries. Korea was one, Brazil was one, so on and so forth. Also, there were some concerns about the data which was being presented. So the of officials have been asked that at the next meeting, you come up with some scientific, credible data. What would be the revenue loss and how do we get to the threshold that when more people go cashless, so then we can become, you know, a, a, it, should, it could become a revenue neutral proposition. Right, so a decision there, still some time away. Let's shift focus now to the day's market action. A last hour rally saw markets end uh, at a three-month high levels, led by major gains in financials and energy stocks. The Nifty reclaimed 10,800 levels with gains of 90 points. The Sensex rallied by as much as 300 points. The mid-caps, however, underperformed benchmarks, closing with gains of about half a percent. Banks, meanwhile, were the star performers today. The index rallied by more than a percent. Well, shifting focus now to the telecom sector. Party Etel and Idea were under pressure today in today's trade, with both stocks ending down by 6% and 12% respectively. This after Jio unveiled disruptive postpaid plan for both domestic as well as international calling. Reema Tendulkar now joins us with more details. Reema, uh, Jio's disruptive postpaid plan is already taking a toll, it seems, on the incumbents and yet again this time. Yes, big cracks in the stock price of telecom stocks. They've anyway been struggling. Uh, Bharti's down more than 25% in 2018. Idea is now down close to about 50%. Uh, the negative news today is Reliance Geo, after disrupting the prepaid segment, is now targeting the postpaid segment with its first offering called Hello Postpaid. So for a monthly payment of 199 rupees, you get 25 GB data, unlimited voice, unlimited SMS, premium subscription to the Geo apps, as well as some benefits on international calling. Now, this postpaid segment that Reliance Geo is trying to crack into constitutes about 5% of the subscriber base. But these are your premium customers. They have higher average revenue per user. So the revenue contribution to the industry could be as high as 20 to 25%. And that is the market Reliance Geo now wants. With its monthly offering of 199 rupees, it is cheaper than peers, which could be in a range of about 400 rupees. Not just that, Reliance Geo has also significantly cut international roaming rates. So calling to US so Canada can, as, can be as cheap as 50 paise per minute. Now, all this will clearly impact the revenues of uh, incumbent players, which is why the stocks are trading weak today. A big cut seen in both Bharti as well as IDEA. Kotak believes the impact on the revenues will be about 6 to 7 percent, while C CLSA says the impact on Bharti could be uh, 2 to 4 percent. On the IDEA Vodafone merged entity, the impact could be 7 to 23 percent of their revenues. Well, standard disclaimer there on your screens. RIL, the promoter of Rel Geo, also controls Network 18, which in turn owns CNBC TV 18. And well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business R. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.